In this video, we're going to talk about playing your favorite Windows games on Linux using Wine in a wrapper called Play on Linux. Now, in other videos on this channel, I've used something called Crossover, which is a tool provided by Codeweavers to do pretty much the same thing. Both Play on Linux and Crossover act as sort of managers for your Wine prefixes, among other things. Play on Linux can usually be found in your distro's default repositories, though if you can't find it, you can just go to their website and download it there. And also, before I go too far, I know that you can do sort of the same thing with Lutris and use Lutris to run and install and play your Windows games and stuff like that, but for this video, we're only going to be talking about Play on Linux. So to get started with Play on Linux, you want to install the damn thing. Now on most distros, it is a massive download with lots of dependencies. And since Play on Linux is somewhat of an unstable application, you'll always want to make sure that you have the latest version, which at the time of this video is 4.2.12. If for whatever reason your repo doesn't have that version, or it just doesn't have it at all, you can go to the Play on Linux website and just download it from there. They've been working on the next version for some time now, and I don't know when it's going to be released, but 4.2 is just fine. So if you've never used Play on Linux, the workflow is kind of weird. The buttons and options are pretty straightforward. You want to install a program, click Install Program. The install menu is almost like a repository of install scripts that Play on Linux uses to install the games or applications you want. There's a lot of applications in here, and a lot of games. And if the game or application you want to install isn't listed, on the bottom left-hand side of the install menu, there's Install Non-Listed Program. So you can use Play on Linux to manage games that aren't listed in these repos. Alright, now I want to show you what it looks like to install an application with Play on Linux. We're going to be installing Steam, and from Steam, we're going to be installing and playing Skyrim. Now it's important and confusing to note that you can install either Steam or Skyrim in Play on Linux. In this case, we're only going to be installing Steam, and then from Steam, we're going to install Skyrim. Installing Steam is pretty straightforward. I think that the only thing that Play on Linux does for Steam is install the Microsoft fonts, because without them, you won't have any text when you launch Steam. As you saw, it asked me to install the same fonts twice. I'm not sure if that's a bug in Play on Linux or in the install script, but it's kind of weird. And now that Steam is installed, we have a new desktop icon, and there's a new listing in the actual launcher. Now obviously to run Steam we can use the shortcut, or we can just launch it from here and play on Linux. Remember earlier in the video when I said play on Linux was somewhat unstable? Well here's an error message. For whatever reason it thinks that it crashed, and it clearly didn't. So now that we've got Steam up, let's go ahead and install Skyrim. So when we tell Steam to install Skyrim it'll add a desktop shortcut, which is cool, but I'm pretty sure that that's just normal wine functionality. So in the comments in my last video, somebody asked about the settings I have for Guild Wars 2. I installed Guild Wars 2 with Play on Linux, and it has a really, really solid set of default configurations. I think that the only thing I actually changed in the prefix was the Wine version, which is super simple to do with Play on Linux. And in fact, there's a newer version of Wine staging, so let's pull it down. Now what's really cool about this, and this is probably my favorite feature of Play on Linux, is that it's actually downloading and installing that Wine version for this prefix, and it's not system-wide, it's not installing it from your local repos, it's doing its own thing. So now that we've downloaded and installed that Wine version, I can go back to the Guild Wars 2 prefix and select it. Now these two launch arguments came as defaults when I installed Guild Wars 2. Digging deeper into the Wine configuration, this prefix uses Windows 7, and I've got CSMT enabled for much, much better graphics performance. In fact, I think Guild Wars runs like garbage unless this is turned on. Now that Skyrim is done installing, let's hop back over to the Steam prefix and play it. Now depending on the distro, Skyrim may or may not work right out the box, and a handy feature of Play on Linux is being able to run games in debug mode. Now all debug mode is really is a new window that feeds all of the log information into it so you can see what's happening with your prefix real time. If you're lucky, any errors that you run into in game will be shown here, and you can get an idea of how to fix them. Sometimes it's because your system is missing important libraries or whatever, other times it's because the actual prefix is missing some overrides. Luckily for me though, Skyrim was just fine, but in the event that you do need to install some extra software like, say, DirectX or some other Visual Studio stuff, Play on Linux has you covered there too. There's a section in the prefix setting called Install Components, and from here you can install all sorts of things. I believe that these components are actually coming from Winehacks and not Play on Linux, and unfortunately there's a lot of duplicates in here, like there's several versions of DirectX, which is really weird. If you don't know what you need to install, just go to the Wine HQ and somebody will probably know there. Now aside from those glitching shadows, I think that it's running pretty okay. Now if you caught the dialogue that popped up when I first launched Skyrim, it said that it defaulted to ultra high quality. I think that might be a bit of an overshot here, but considering this is ultra high quality, it's actually running pretty good. 
Remember that I didn't do anything with the wine prefix. I'm running whatever is default for this particular install. I'm fairly certain that it's not running wine staging, so I'm not even using the CSMT extension that Guild Wars is running. I imagine that if I enabled that, I'd probably get a hell of a lot better performance than what we're seeing here. Star Wars The Old Republic is another great game with a fantastic install script and play on Linux. Not only does it install the game, but it also installs a fix for the launcher so that you can actually launch and play the game. If you've ever tried to install this game outside of Lutris or play on Linux, you'll quickly run into this problem. It also includes a bunch of overrides, including all of the overrides for DirectX 9. So when I launch the game, it'll launch the fix script and apparently crash KWIN. And when I go to play the game, the fix script will apparently crash, but the game launches. Despite the fix script crashing and KWIN crashing, I'm still able to play the game. And I mean, look at the frame rate. It's really good. Now, unfortunately, I haven't played Star Wars The Old Republic in a pretty long time, so I have no idea what I'm doing here. But I think this is a good place to stop the video. I hope that you've enjoyed this one, and if it helped you play your favorite Windows games on Linux, let me know. I love your comments, appreciate your support, and thanks for watching.